everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am a Dirkful Rachel, and it's time once again for another episode of Rachel Reviews, so let's just hop into it. Paddington 2 was released this week, and I had to go check it out because I finally watched the first one last week. I remember when I saw the very first trailer of the first film, and I immediately thought to myself, really? You're doing this to a British children's literature icon? I mean, I didn't really grow up with Paddington, but I know enough to recognize that going down the route of child lowbrow humor is not exactly a good representation. Or at least that's how they were advertising it. But then a little while later, people started telling me, oh yeah, no, it's really good. You should check it out. It's a good movie. So I finally did and yeah, they're right. It's a really good film. Yeah, of course it's a family film, but it's really fun and it's charming and it's also really enduring. So yeah, why not see the second one and see if it holds up just as well? And before we get into the review, this episode is brought to you by Stardust. Stardust is a free app that you can download onto your phone, link is in the description down below, and it's the easiest way to post reactions to movies and TV shows and trailers on social media. Whenever I go see a new movie, I always post my immediate reaction on this app, so that's the best way to see my first thoughts on the film before I even review it. And it's not just new stuff, because there are literally thousands of things that you can react to on this app. And if you download the app, you can post your own reactions, watch other reactors, and if you tag me in one of your reactions, you might get a chance to appear in my next video. Now let's talk about Paddington. In the new film, Paddington, having settled in with the Brown family in London, wants to buy a rare pop-up book about London for his Aunt Lucy for her 100th birthday. And this book is really important to Paddington because if it weren't for his Aunt Lucy, he would have never made it to London in the first place. But when the book is stolen by an actor slash thief, played by Hugh Grant, Paddington is ultimately framed when police catch him at the scene of the crime. So poor Paddington is sent to jail and it's up to the Brown family to prove his innocence, all while Paddington is adjusting to life on the inside. I think one of my favorite things about this film, besides the fact that it completely holds up after watching the first one, is that it's not a blatant repeat at all of the first movie. It feels like a continuation for these characters. There are some things that show up again, and there are some minor characters from the last film that make quick appearances, but other than that, it's a very original film, and it stands on its own insanely well. And in a lot of ways, it's actually probably better than the first one. Since it's a couple years later, there's a lot of characters, particularly the Brown family, that show a lot of signs of change and growth. Some of the changes might feel a little out of nowhere and kind of goofy, but you know, this movie does kind of live in its own little world and it's allowed to be goofy sometimes, so they don't really feel that out of place. I mean, for goodness sake, these are live action movies that seem to be okay with the fact that there's a bear just walking around and talking to everybody. No one questions how this is possible. Also, a lot of that stuff that feels out of nowhere, well, actually they do come back later in the film, so you can't say that it doesn't come full circle Paddington himself is of course a CGI bear, and as we all know, lead characters that are CGI in live action films do kind of tend to get a really bad rap. But the thing is, even though you're aware that it's a CGI bear, Ben Winshaw's performance of Paddington is still just so full of the greatest heart and charm and passion and positivity, and you just believe that he is alive and real. And it just warms your heart so much because he is so humble and sees the good in everyone, and he's just impossible to hate. He may not look real 100% of the time, but he sure feels real. And Paddington is a really clumsy character and gets into a lot of mishaps, which somehow works in a creatively humorous way, and you just really feel bad for him whenever he gets into trouble. Hugh Grant as the villain is absolutely phenomenal. Just like Nicole Kidman in the first film, he is just the right kind of evil for this environment. He's got motivations and a master plan, but he's also kind of subtle in his maniacal performance. And he's not like over the top like so many villains in these kind of films. 
And don't get me wrong, villains who chew up the scenery every once in a while in a movie can work, but it is really hard to pull that off in a really engaging way. A lot of times when they let a character do that, they can just be really annoying in family films. But in both of these films, the villains are actually very grounded, and yeah, they're calm and collected in comparison to a lot of other villains in family films, but they're still very watchable in their own way. There's a scene or two in this film where Hugh Grant is just sitting in his dressing room and he's surrounded by all these costumes and disguises that he has and he's talking to them but he's also like giving them the voices so he's talking to himself but like in different characters I really think we're going to pull this off Ooh, you really think you are do you something like that but it's hilarious this guy's a freaking schizo it's awesome and of course Brandon Gleason is absolutely delightful as Knuckles the head chef of the jail man I'm really mean and my archetype is in every other kids film out there but Gosh darn it, I'm just so charming. Also, just the look and the production design is something to really, really admire about these films. Those are worth the price of admission. I mean, just look at it. The colors are just so vibrant and bring such energy to the screen. At some point, these movies kind of remind me of Wes Anderson films just by looking at it, and that really does exemplify the fact that it does clearly live in its own little world. And it's one of the many factors that just makes it so charming. I remember being really worried a couple of years ago that this was just going to be another beloved product that fell into the shallowness of the Hollywood system, but then I remembered, oh yeah, Brits made this movie, and it was produced by the guy who did the Harry Potter films, so I, I guess it has a better chance. And it turned out that these films were just such delightful pieces of entertainment. And truth be told, I have been so moved by both of these movies. They were just handled with such love and such care. And director Paul King clearly had great respect for the original source material. He knew how to bring Paddington to the screen and how to make him live and breathe in our imaginations. And he did it in a way that didn't make it feel degrading. It really felt like they they wanted to tell some really fun stories. They didn't want to just make money, they actually wanted to put smiles on our faces and to make us feel better for having watched them. And one of the biggest surprises about this film in particular is that there's actually a couple of moments that might make you tear up a little bit. I was shocked! There was actually some moments that really make you feel so bad and worried for these characters and you just want to love them even more. This it is a film that was released in January, right? If you love the first film, then you are definitely gonna love this one. It's light, it's colorful, it's sweet, it's super engaging, and just like the last one, it is also just so enduring. But not in a super kinda icky, corny way. You watch these movies and you want to let them get inside your heart. You want to feel good watching them. Yes, it's definitely a family film, but it's one that so many adults can find a lot of redeeming factors in. There needs to be more movies like this. And there especially needs to be more family films like this. Whether or not you have kids, I highly recommend this movie. And I would go check out the first one as well if you haven't. And who knows, maybe this means we're opening more doors for more family films that are based on classic children's literature, but it'll actually be treated with dignity and have so much charm and be so engaging. Come on in. We've got the garden. Help yourself to anything. This is only the beginning. <laughs> on Paddington 2, so now I want to know, did you get a chance to check it out? And if so, what did you think? Did you see the first movie? Did you grow up with Paddington? Do you feel like these films did the original source material justice? Also let me know because it's a hard pick, which one did you like better, the first one or the second one? And are there any other movies or TV shows or even trailers coming up that you want me to do a review of? Well go ahead and leave your comments below, be sure to like and share, and if you're new and like what you saw here, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and also be sure to hit the little bell button down there to get notified when new stuff comes out because I make new videos every week! Bye, Drinker Buddies! I'll see you soon!